I'm gonna show you how to take care of your trailer wheel bearing maintenance. That's gonna involve removal of the bearing, cleaning, inspection, making sure that everything looks good, then repacking with grease and reassembly. The first thing that you need to do is get your trailer up in the air on the side you wanna work on. What I personally use are some 16,000 pound ramps. They're made out of plastic. They nest together so they store easily and I can use it to put, get my trailer up in the air when I have the car loaded as well in case I have trouble on the road. So this is part of my sort of everyday carry kit for trailer stuff. Once you uh, loosen the lug nuts and get the trailer up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and take the wheel off. And then using some gloves, we'll pull it aside. I do end up using the wheel for the next part of the process. It depends on the kind of hub that you're working on though. As you can see for this video, I'm doing the idler axle. There's not any brake assembly on here, but the process is the exact same. So if you had a brake assembly, the part where I pull this hub off is the part where your entire brake drum would come off. Next, we need to get this dust seal off. So you're going to use a hammer and a small prying device. Then you can step up to a bigger prying device and just pry that out. Inside you'll find a cotter pin. Use some needle nose pliers to work in behind it and remove it. So you just straighten that out as best you can. What I like to do is take the end of your needle nose, stick it through the eye of the cotter pin and then hammer it out like that. Next, we remove the castle nut. On the Dexter 5200 pound axle, which is what I've got, you can use a one and a half inch socket. It should be just about finger loose, but it might take just one turn. And things are gonna get messy for a bit from this stage on. So if you have some gloves, now would be a good time to wear them. I moved the tire so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So we're going to spin this off. It should come off easily by hand. This one's kind of notchy. The threads might be a little dirty, so we'll make sure to clean those out. You can also begin in assessing the amount and condition of grease that's on here. This side looks pretty good. It doesn't seem like it's been under any major stress. And at this point, everything can be pulled out depending on how you want to deal with it. What I personally like to do is fish out the washer. So I'll use a small pick to try to help me with that. But at this point, the thing is loose and I could just pull the whole hub off. If you do decide to pull the whole hub off, cup your hand around the end because the inner bearing, which looks like this, is right there and you do not want this to fall. If it falls and takes a hit, it can impact the life of the bearing pretty poorly. So I still have one clean hand, so I'm just gonna cup the bottom and wiggle this out. And if you were dealing with a brake drum, the whole drum would come out in the exact same way. Now that we have gravity on our side, that bearing just falls out. Filming this part of the process is kind of a nightmare, so we're just gonna leave the camera rolling and make it work. But the next thing that you have to do is get the rear bearing out. Now, what you've got right here is an oil seal. This is a nice pristine one. We're gonna replace it. It's just a uh, frequently a one-sided piece of metal with a seal, and all that it's doing is sealing around this shaft right there and keeping it clean so that crap from the road doesn't get up in here and mess up your bearings. So we're just gonna pry that out. They make tools for that, or you can just use a pry bar. You do wanna be careful not to scratch the bearing that's inside. It's a large bearing, it looks like this. And depending on how strong you are, you may find that you can just get in here and pry this out while holding this down by hand. Me personally, I'm not that strong. So what I'm gonna do is grab the tire and I'm actually gonna bolt this hub back to the tire so that the weight of the tire and the leverage of holding the edge of the tire instead of something far closer is going to make this really easy for me. So we're going to take our tire and hub assembly and just put the bolts through. Then on the other side, we're gonna hold that and put the nuts on like this. We only need two, just enough to hold it in place and we'll blast these down. That'll do. Now we can flip this over, and now we can use our pry tool to get this seal out. Now, you're gonna figure out which end works best for you from experience, and remember, we're going in between this and that. This metal right here is actually the bearing. You can see it rotate there, right? So we're not gonna wanna scratch that up. We're gonna go above it, push in, 
Get it hooked, hold your tire, and then pull. That one actually came out pretty easy. Sometimes you have to work around a few sides. That's how that works. Now this is that old bearing seal. It goes right in the trash. Those are not reusable parts we're gonna replace with new. Part numbers will be in the description. We can now just fish this guy out. It's wild how little holds all these things together, given that you put thousands of pounds on them and go down the road. That completes disassembly. Now we're gonna move on to cleaning. I'm just gonna stick with the POV view here because it's really hard to move your camera around when you're working with automotive lubricant. So we're just going to clean a lot of this old grease out. Now the good thing about this is that there is old grease in here. It's not all caked up or like old and completely used up looking. Of course, it's gonna be dark colored from road grime and things. But all in all, it means that this bearing assembly and hub was not starved for grease, which is good. So just try and get as much of the old grease out as you can by hand there. We can also look at the anatomy inside of how these bearings work. So your bearing has what's called a race and then the bearing itself. So this is the part that spins. This is your race, it sits in there. So this little piece of metal right here has been press fit in, that's your race. Usually this stays in, you don't have to mess with this unless you find that it's damaged. Your inspection is gonna be feeling and looking visually for a bunch of pitting, scratch marks, etc. If it looks destroyed, then you'll want to replace it and you can hammer it out. We would talk about that later, but there's a little lip here and you can hammer that out with brass usually. But this is just gonna stay hammered in there, so when we reinstall, that's what we're gonna be looking like, except it'll be covered in grease, so I wanted to give you the visual now. That side is clean enough in my book. We're gonna flip it and just do the same thing on the inner race. Just reach down in here, try to scoop out any huge globs of grease. I sometimes find it's easier to just move myself around the wheel, but that's just what I do. I might be quirky. Either way, we get this thing clean enough, we'll say. Next, we've got the spindle, same process here. We're just gonna go around it, try to remove the majority of any old grease. And you'll see where it's clean right up until here. This is where that seal sits. This is where the big bearing rides, and this is where the small wheel bearing rides. So if we were to build this, you'd have your seal riding up there where it's still clean, your large bearing riding right there and spinning, and then your small bearing riding right there. So that is how your assembly looks. And then of course on the outside of these here, you've got the races and then they're inside of the hub. And so that is how everything looks as it's going down the road. Also a pro tip, although this is out of order, when you're handling these and you go to put them inside of a race, holding them on the outside doesn't work very easily, especially when you're working against gravity or you're going sideways. So what I like to do is put my thumbs or two fingers inside like that, and then it's very easy to position it. Or if you're going sideways like that, you can hold it like this to put it into the race. You'll just find that that's a lot easier than this, where you might flub something and then you've got a bunch of oil everywhere. The spindle here is ready for final cleaning. That's where we're gonna blast it down with brake cleaner, real good. To get any sort of like grit off, we don't want anything like little pebbles or sand, like any of the stuff that you would find down here. We do not want any of that in there. Go to our new container here. These threads were kind of grimy, so I'm blasting them out too. And we can go just over the top up there, but uh, when you do that, you might get some junk down into the lower areas, so be kind of careful about the order you do that in. Next, let's take care of these. We're just gonna take all of them over to where we're gonna clean our parts, which for me is over there. We're gonna use some Mineral spirits. I cut a hole in a little paint jug to make a work area. An old toothbrush, our brake cleaner, and our towels. And of course our parts 
which we have right here. So we're gonna take some mineral spirits and pour them into our jug. We wanna have enough to probably cover that big bearing ideally. And then if you want, you don't really have to do this. The mineral spirits will do the trick, but you can try to get any excess stuff off and then you're gonna drop them into the parts bath basically that we got. So it's all gonna turn black. You won't be able to see in there anyway because the mineral spirits will do their job. But this is just for the purposes of illustration here. So this guy is still sticking up a little bit. So we'll just add a bit more. Something like that will do. And then if you're wanting to take a break, now's a good time. If you wanna speed the process along, you can do that too. You can swirl it around or you can get straight into cleaning. To get straight into cleaning, lay out your clean area, pick something easy. I like to start with the flat stuff. I'm just using my hand to kind of clean it off. There's not really any grooves or complex parts where stuff could get stuck on here. So I actually think that this is fine. You can also move it back and forth in the water like that. Oh yeah, that looks great. Now to get everything off all the way, it's going to be a blast from brake cleaner. We'll shake it off. Don't drop it. I'm making a circle like this on purpose so that I don't have any risk of sending it flying because we wanna keep these clean from this point forward. If we drop it and we get small grit and stuff from the ground, that's gonna get into our bearings. We don't want that. It's gonna shorten our bearing life. So we're gonna put that there. Same thing. I really wanna keep this as clean as I can. So actually I'm just gonna get a new paper towel. Put that there. We'll use this for something else at some point. It's plenty messy. Next up is our castle nut. Kind of the same deal. We're just gonna wiggle it around in the water. We can use our brush. And a lot of times these, they're called castellations here. You can use your brush to get the old grease out of them. Now you might be thinking, what's the point? It's just gonna be covered with new grease. Well, in part because the old grease, if it's done its job and is all black, it's picked up a bunch of grossness that you don't want to get back into your assemblies. Next, we're moving on to our bearings. So I'm gonna start with our, our small wheel bearing. As you can see, just sitting in the bath has already done a pretty good job, but the inside is still packed with old grease. So what I like to do is you can either hold it like this and move it around back and forth in the water, give it a little spin like that. What you're doing is the water is flushing through here. It's actually got like, you can hear it moving. It's actually got some play. So anything that you can do like this is gonna let the water just come right through it. Another thing that you can do is to hold it like this and actually push it down. And if you can see, you'll see the water is rushing up through the inside there. You can probably hold it on the edge and, and do the same thing. I just always hold it in the middle. And then you can spin it periodically. And this process should push the old oil up to the front. And we can use our brush. Go around, face it the other way, do the same thing. Spin it as well. And you repeat this process until you feel pretty happy about how everything looks in there. Like so. When you do, we're ready to blast it down. I'm definitely holding it on the inside so that everything is free to move. And then we're gonna try to get in between these areas here. That's probably gonna blast most things out. If you want to, you can spin it and blast it some. 
You don't want to use compressed air for this, but that'll work. Again, we're going to secure it really well, shake it out, make sure we don't drop it. We could ruin the whole thing. And now we can also inspect the bearing closely. So you're going to be looking for pitting. I'll, I'll put some pictures up on the screen, but you're going to be looking for pitting, cracks, anything like that. Is that a scratch? That's interesting. You look at the front, you look at the inside of the race, you'll see here there's definitely some wear. It looks like it's been under some pressure there and some discoloration. I don't see anything too concerning, and as long as you're carrying spares, I feel like this bearing will get the pass for me personally anyway. So what's going on to our clean sheet? We'll repeat the process for the big bearing. You can see there's a lot of oil up in here. So we're gonna scrape that loose like so, and get it out of there. So again, this looks boring, but moving it through this way pushes that oil to the front. And then when you break it up into small pieces like this, it enables it to just come apart and flow away. It'll stay in the water down there. Do this forwards, do this backwards. You can see there's still globs here. We'll do this on the back side as well. Already looking better. We'll brush these big nasty globs, break them up into smaller pieces. looks pretty good to me. Time to give this a good blast. And you'll see stuff just coming right out of it, which is exactly what we want. Give it a good blast from the front. And we'll shake it loose, shake it dry. Give it an inspection as well. These all look pretty good. Front looks fine. Back looks fine. The inner here looks great. Yeah, this is fine. No surprise that bearing is fit for reuse. So we're ready to take these clean parts back over for reinstall into the vehicle. We should give them some time to dry. Back over here, we'll blast these loose again. Not all the way, because I'm not gonna drop that. We'll take it up this way to finish the job. Like so. Now for cleaning, we have gotten all these clean, but we need to do the same sort of brake clean treatment to the inside of this. So we'll blast it, then we'll use towels to clean the inside because it'll weaken that extra grease. Like so. Same thing for the other side. Fresh towel or two. Nothing too precious. And we make sure that this is dry so that that brake cleaner has evaporated before we finish the process. I'm just gonna use my fingernail here to go around the outside of that race. Like so. So you might give that a minute to dry. Now everything is clean. We've done our inspection. This all looks good. We don't see any damage on the race, on the bearings, on the spindle. 
This is also a good time to check your suspension out, make sure nothing is coming apart there. Everything looks perfect. If you had brakes, you'd be checking your brake assembly out as well. That'll be a separate video for me because I'm not doing that brake at this time. And then we'll be ready for reassembly. For reassembly, we'll want to use fresh gloves. Because we want to keep contamination to a minimum. This is not the part of the process where you want your tools to get any of this crap on them or anything else. It's all got to stay clean. So we've got that. We've got our grease. I'm using Mobile One Synthetic Grease, which also is designed for wheel bearings, among other things. And we're ready to get started. First and foremost, having a spare towel is good. I'm just going to put that under my leg here. Now we're going to open this up two fingers and I like to grease the inside of all these races before I do the bearing packing because I have oil everywhere. At this point I have a fairly clean hand so it's not so bad. I don't think you really need to get oil where the races aren't but or sorry grease I keep calling it oil. I don't think we need to put grease where the races aren't however I'm doing it anyway. You can do the top side when it's actually on the hub, or sorry, when it's on the uh, on the axle, the spindle, if you want to. But I'm gonna get us started again because it's just easier before I'm all covered in wheel bearing grease. Same thing for the spindle. Make sure that you get a pretty good coating on the spindle. It does not need to go up here. The seal is right there. You'll end up getting some on the threads. You don't have to worry about the threads. And it doesn't have to be an insane coating because the bearing's gonna have oil on it as well. But we need some, like that. Now, the big bearing, wipe that off, is going in. It's going in right there. Like we showed, we've got the race. We got the bearing. So this is where we use a lot. Big wad of grease. Squeeze it out onto your hand here. And now I like to take the thin side of the bearing and pack from the thin side. You can do it either way, but we're going to just take little bites of this grease like this and just push down. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna fill up these chambers and it's gonna squirt out the top. You don't need to go in a whole lot. You'll just put a bunch of stuff on the inside. So I'm really only trying to take real little bites out of this pile of grease, right? And as I go, you'll see it start to push through. See it coming up? That is how you know that you have loaded that area completely. If it comes up and it's black, then it's old grease being pushed out that your cleaning didn't get completely, which is fine. So see there, there's some black. We wanna go until we see some red. There we go. Then we can turn it and just keep taking little bites. And this is the process as you go the whole way around. Because of how thick the viscosity is of this grease, it's really easy to see it moving up through. Hey, sweet girl. There's my little one making a cameo in the video. But we're just gonna keep taking little bites. Until we get everything nice and full. No problem. Move in periodically. You'll find that there gets to be some on the inside here. You can just scoop it out. Put it back in your grease pile. Slide it around. Keep rolling. There I got way too much, not the end of the world. If you really want that back, you can grab it, but it just is gonna happen periodically. So you can pack as fast as you want to. You see, it comes up pretty quickly. Now, this is fully packed. Then you can go run around the side like that. You'll have some extra, you can pull it out into a pile, 
go around the front. You know the front's packed because you packed from the front, so it's no big deal. Make sure there's some on the inside for the race, but again, that's why we did the race too. You don't have to do the, a perfect job with that. But we'll just take our spare grease from this pile and get it distributed. Just like that. Now we're ready to drop it in. Like I said before, take two fingers, since you can't hold it on the outside, and place it gently inside. The other benefit of that is you don't get a lot of grease on the outside, and especially if you're dealing with your brake drum, you really don't want to get grease in that brake drum. We can go ahead and push that in, and that's going to be that. At this point, I usually just go ahead and get new gloves. Try to cap that when it's not in use, and that towel that I was keeping under my leg is going to come in handy as well. Now we're ready for the seal to go in. It's a pretty fun process. So the seal has an open area and a flat area. The flat area is going to go facing up. So you just place it on there. And then when you feel pretty good about that, you can either gently tap it in with a hammer or you can do what I do, assuming that everywhere is in a little bit, which everywhere is, find a piece of wood. Make sure that it's clean. Don't be a dummy. Any crap that gets in here is gonna make our bearing life shorter. Make sure your wood is clean. Piece of wood, don't set it this way, because when you hammer it, any crap on the wood's gonna fall in there. Set it flat. Now we come around, grab our BFH. Done. No need to overthink it, and it keeps things clean. Now we can go around. Any grease that's on the outside can get cleaned up, and we're ready to put this bad boy on the spindle. Now you can lean your head in here. You wanna make sure that you don't beat up the seal with that part of the spindle. The rest of it's pretty smooth. You may hear a little pop. Because of all of the grease, it's very thick, you'll actually see it push back out. Like I can push it back and it actually falls down. That's okay. It should not fall off unless I'm super unlucky in this video, but I've never had one fall off before. It can stay like that. One more pair of gloves. All right, next up is our small bearing. Same process. Grab a pretty decent amount of grease. This is way more than I need because it's a smaller bearing now that I think about it. Two fingers in here, grab it, and start taking small bites. You'll see how much quicker this tiny bearing packs. Look, it's already coming through versus the big. Shift around, get a new area. Beautiful. <laughs> hey, sweet girl. This is your first appearance on YouTube. She knows that I do YouTube content. She wants to ride in the race car. She wants to mess me up on my videos. She doesn't, she's a sweet thing. I do. All right, so we get this all packed with grease. Beautiful, right? Take that, go around the side like so. Ooh, big jump. See you later, kiddo. You can go around the front. And then any leftover grease, we're gonna put onto the sides. So we're really covering all our bases here because we've already done the same thing to the inside of the race and the spindle. Now here's where that sort of like two finger, and then you slide it on. Now here, because the hub has fallen off a little bit, it's not gonna go on, so I'm gonna push it up and there, I can feel it go up onto the spindle. Now, it'll still try to come off a bit because of how thick that grease is, but that's okay. That's what our next steps are for. So, we're going to go ahead. I like to put some grease on this because it is going to be flush against that moving part. This is the side that it was flush against. You can tell because it's got that very well indicated line. There's a flat spot here. It lines up with the flat spot there. I put the same side back on that was facing that way before, although I really don't think it matters. And then same here. It may not matter 
but I do put a little bit there. I don't really worry about getting the rest, although I'm sure that some grease will uh, keep the corrosion and stuff from cropping up on these, which it shouldn't. And then we just get this started. I'm notoriously bad at starting these for some reason, but we're gonna get that guy started and then spin it on. Okay, now we're ready for tightening. This is one of the most important processes to your bearing life. We're also done with the gross part, so we can go ahead, take all this off, chuck it in the trash, clean up anything that's left, and put the cap back on that mess. Likewise, now that this is on here, we can spin this and I won't have to worry about it falling off. I like to give it a spin. It just contains the oil kind of in there. For our next step, we're going to tighten all of this down. And in order to do that, we got to make sure that whatever we're using to tighten it is clean. This is old grease. It's full of grime. That's why it's dark. So we're going to make sure we do our best to clean this off so that we don't get crap up in here. As you can see, the theme is making sure that we keep everything in here nice and clean. I'm gonna put this on, it's still finger tight. Now, what we're gonna do is tighten and spin. So we're gonna tighten that down and spin this. Tighten it down more and spin it. I weigh about 175, so I'm not trying to kill it here, but if you want a torque spec, we're going for at least 50 foot-pounds or about 50 foot-pounds. As you can see, this does not want to spin. What we have done is put a lot of preload onto these bearings. If I show you the bearings, they've got some wiggle room. Listen, you hear that clicky clack? That's the sound of this having a little bit of movement. What we're doing right now is we're squashing this together as hard as we can. So we're taking all these bearings that were loose and we're cramming them up into these races. That's going to mean everything sits nice and flush and correctly. There's not going to be any wobbling, but we can't run it down the road this way. If they're under this much pressure and the wheel barely wants to turn, then you will not make it to your destination before there's a catastrophic failure and this thing overheats and stuff goes everywhere. So once you have got it as tight as you can and you've spun it a little bit, tighten more, then we're going to go back to loosen. You do not spin it after this because what we've done is we've got everything nice and lined up and if we spin it it'll give it a chance to come misaligned also if you were to drop the tool into here definitely clean it before you use it again we're gonna loosen this till it's totally finger loose see now comes the last part first of all we make sure we know where our uh, cotter pin hole is we're gonna finger tighten this just go until it doesn't go anymore just with just with my hand Hopefully that'll line up with the hole. In my case, I'm lucky it does. If it did not, then you would back off a little bit until it does line up. If it's really close and it needs to go just a hair tighter, you can use just a little bit, but I'm talking a 16th of an inch at most. In this case, it lined up pretty well. Keeping with our trend of cleaning all of our tools. Okay, that went through just fine. Now we bend these up and over to secure and grab something to push them nice and flush with. That's not going anywhere. And now you'll see it spins easily. If there was a brake drum, it would spin even more. And you'll see when we put the tire on, it'll spin quite a bit. That finishes the process, we're going to put our cap back on. You can probably tap those on. If not, you can go around them gently with a little rubber mallet. They're not a tight fit. They just keep, again, that area clean. Next, we got our gloves. Put our wheel back on. I found for me what works best is to center those two to where they're both equally high at the top. It just is a good visual indicator. Uh, come in here. Everybody's got their own method for this. I'm quite 
quite weak physically, so uh, I just kind of do that. Get that pushed back on, hand start. All of our lug nuts with everything roughly tightened down, we'll tighten them up. Now, if you have a big impact gun, you don't want to do this. This is more of an impact like drill. It's not strong. It can't even put 50 foot pounds onto these things. But what I like to do is do the two that are level first. If you were gonna do this by the book, you'd do it by hand. You could use a tool like this to spin them down most of the way like this. And then as soon as you hit resistance, you'd go to your hand tightening phase. But for me, I know my tools, I've been using them for years. And I know that if I just blast this at full power, it's only gonna put about 30 foot pounds on. Especially if I don't just leave it cranking, it's not very strong. We are gonna tighten in a star pattern. That looks like this. And now we're ready to torque. For that, we're going to use my split beam torque wrench. I won't make you watch all of that, but in a nutshell, you're gonna start at 25, do all of them. You'll hear a click like that. It'll be a louder click when you've got more power for each of these. So first step is 25, second step is 60, third step is 100. The most you can go up to is 120. Tighten them all down best you can. What I like to do is tighten them as much by hand as I can when it's in the air and then pull down until the tire is just barely touching the ground but I can put full force on it and then go around do my final tightening before I finally take the vehicle off the ramps. And if you wonder what parts I used, the part numbers for the bearings or anything else, I will include those in the description below. Keep in mind for your bearing part numbers, they may not be the exact same. I can't account for all the possible differences in terms of like trailer creation, but I'll put down what I've got from my Dexter 5,200 pound axles. I'll put down links for all the tools. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments. And I also run a newsletter and do drifting videos. If you're into that, or if that sounds neat to you, then check it out with my other video library or what's down in the description. Otherwise, have a great time and enjoy your trailering life. Peace.